So we have covered almost all topics of uh, Docker module one. Let's quickly recap the overall Docker content. First, we looked at Docker architecture. We have a Docker CLI, which is used to connect to Docker host, where actual Docker daemon is running. We have Docker registry, where all images are kept. To build the image, Docker CLI gives instruction to host. The Docker daemon builds the image, and we push the image to the registry for later use. Second step is to pull the image from the registry to your host machine. So we can run docker pull command to pull the image. It connects to docker registry, pulls the image and keeps it on the host machine. To run, we can issue a command docker run to your docker daemon. It picks up the image from your local cache and runs the container. Remember that you can run as many containers as you want from a single image. So image is like a class and containers like instance of that class, which are objects. Let's look at this Docker in overall end-to-end -end workflow. So when we make a change to source code, we push the source code to a Git repository and we build an image. Then based on the need, we tag the image and we push it to the central registry. Then we pull the image where we want to run as a environment. Then we run it as a container. Start stop container. When work is done, we remove the actual container and the images as well from the machine. So that's how the full life cycle of the uh, Docker image. Now to build the optimized image, we use multi-stage Docker file to separate build and run stage. This helps us to avoid unwanted files from the build. We use Docker ignore to reduce the context size, which further optimize our build time. We break up our build steps to create reusable layers, which helps us to cache our layers effectively and reduces the build time again. We also make sure that we optimize the size by looking at Docker history command, and we make sure that they're as small as possible, and we avoid all the unwanted content inside the Docker image. So these are the ways you can optimize your Docker images and build. Now, one question that comes up in my mind that, okay, can I use Docker for development as well? I say that, Many times I've seen the use case where Docker is still not ready in the organization to go to production and they are not ready with all the uh, ecosystem that is needed for going in production. However, I would recommend that you start using Docker for development. So that's all in the module one. Let's just quickly recap what all we covered. We started with why and what of container. We covered Docker architecture. We looked into the Docker images. We learned how to build Docker images. We learned what is there inside Docker image, which is layers. We learned how to optimize images. We learned multi-stage Docker file to build and run separately. We learned how to create versions for the images. And yes, we can use Docker only for development as well. That's all in the module one. Thank you.